So just a quick disclaimer, this interview is not in any way to suggest that Ghanaians, Nigerians, South Africans, Ethiopians or Africans in general are smarter than a particular group of people. I'm here to talk to Africans in the diaspora who are excelling in their field of work. Um, today I will be talking to Dr. Arthur. Dr. Arthur is a Ghanaian living in the diaspora who holds a PhD in civil engineering. So I'll just be talking to him. It's just going to be a conversation, asking him a few questions. And if you have any comments, leave me a comment. Go to my comment uh, description, leave me a comment, and I will uh, reply. All right. So. How does it feel to hold a PhD in civil engineering? Uh, first off, uh, uh, like the introduction said, I am Godwin Arthur. Uh, I have a PhD in civil engineering with a specialization in structural engineering. Uh, a degree in civil engineering itself, it's uh, quite interesting and quite life fulfilling because uh, you find the things that you do around you, wherever you go, people seem to benefit uh, from whatever that you are doing and uh, uh, not discounting public safety. So uh, being, being able to get a PhD in civil engineering, it's quite appealing. All right, um, I would like you to summarize your story for our viewers. Um, what brought you to the USA? What challenges you faced? How long it took you to, you know, acquire your PhD in civil engineering? Yeah, so uh, I started off from uh, a town in the western region of Ghana called Eninase. Okay. Uh, that was where I was born. I had my basic education at uh, Holy Child School. Uh, from there, I went to Ghana Secondary Technical School. GSTS in Takrati okay. for my uh, for my secondary, secondary. education. Um, from there, I went to KNUSD to pursue a four year bachelor's in civil engineering. Uh, actually, I would say it was destiny that led me to civil engineering because my dad happened to be doing something in the area, and I wanted to do something different. Wow, very interesting. But then after secondary school, when my results came in. I had talked to a few people and uh, they had steered me in that direction, telling me construction is going on everywhere. Uh, Ghana, where I'm from, is a developing country. Yes. So there is a lot to do in that area. And uh, looking at uh, statistics from people who live at uh, the various universities, uh, living without jobs, uh, it will be quite difficult finding someone who did a degree in civil and not finding something to do. So uh, it was something, I would say, in the family line, but I wanted to go somewhere different. Okay. Through the advice of people, I ended up coming right back in. So that's how come I ended in civil engineering. Okay. What motivated you to keep going in education? Because we realized that a lot of people at a point in time will say, man, I'm tired. You know, I just want to focus on work. You know, after acquiring my degree, I'm okay. I just want to, you know, work, 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 and uh, focus on how much money I can save before, you know, heading towards retirement. Now, what pushed you? What motivated you to keep going? Yeah, uh, one thing that I know it's uh, I have always uh, loved to teach. So if you look at my educational part, Right after secondary school, I ended up teaching in my former JSS, okay. which is Holy Child. And then uh, once I got to tech, I graduated, I went back to KNUSD as a teaching assistant okay. for the civil engineering uh, degree over there. So I had always had plans of uh, uh, maybe in the future getting into academia. And uh, I had felt that if I wanted to teach at the highest level mm. uh, in civil, then eventually I would need a PhD one day. Okay. So I felt like uh, if the time was right, then mm. uh, why not push yourself to get it now? And uh, 
that whole uh, I wouldn't say a dream it started after I had finished K and UST. Okay. I worked in Ghana for uh, in consulting for two years. Okay. And then I realized it was time. So I started looking around, uh, trying to see where my next opportunity was going to be. Okay. Yeah. So I ended up in structural engineering in Ghana. So I was looking around for structural engineering master's programs. Mm. And I realized at the time, we didn't have a master's program in KUSD. Oh, so wow. we didn't have a structural engineering program at the master's level at the time in the whole of Ghana. Wow. So that meant I had to find uh, a degree program outside outside Ghana. Outside outside Ghana. So I had first looked at the Netherlands. Okay. Because uh, I looked at opportunities like all over. I looked at Italy. I looked at uh, Norway. Mm. Uh, they had this uh, program. I think they called the quota scheme or something like that. Okay. But that was not specifically in structures. I was just trying to find opportunities all over. So I ended up finding an opportunity in the Netherlands. I see. I, I knew about the U.S., but uh, for some reason, uh, I didn't want to take the GRE. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because I knew I had to take the GRE, yes. and, and then I would apply to schools. I had a good uh, uh, class from GPA. my bachelor's. Yeah, okay. So it's like, in that aspect, I was okay. But I just didn't want to take the GRE. Uh, yeah, I just okay. didn't want to take the GRE. And it, it more had to do with the verbal session of the GRE. Okay. Because I felt like <laughs> no matter how bad you, <laughs> you will prepare, it's, you are not guaranteed See, you are going to do very, very, very well. well okay. Yeah. So, like I was saying, I had applied to a school in the Netherlands and I had gotten the admission. Okay. But then I had to apply for the fellowship. Okay. Uh, which was a Netherlands Fellowship Program. I don't know if they still have it. Mm. So I had uh, done all my paperwork, uh, and I needed somebody at the Ministry of Finance to sign for me. As a guarantor? Uh, no, no, I think as part of the requirements, oh, okay. they need a government official to, to sign. To, to sign. Okay. So I went to the Ministry of Finance, and whoever I had to sign told me I had just finished and I'm just barely two years and I want to leave. Wow. So he didn't sign. sign. Wow. So it was then that I, I just decided, okay, uh, this whole Netherlands uh, dream is off. I don't have uh, any more. It's like, I have to go take the GRE. Okay. The point is I had been preparing, but I just decided once I got the Netherlands so far, I decided, okay, I'm going to the Netherlands. So once they didn't this go through, I just went ahead, took the GRE, and I contacted a school in the US. Okay. And I had told them I had seen something they had put on their page that they had assistantship opportunities and then students were encouraged to apply. Okay. So I had sent an email to one of the professors and he had encouraged me to apply. Wow, interesting. Yeah. So I applied to only one school in the US. <laughs> <laughs> that was the same school. That was yes. So uh, I applied to only one school. Okay. Based on the recommendation of the professor. Wow. That I had talked to because I feel like my GRE scores was not bad. Okay. You know, yes, in a in a quantitative, I have over seven fifty at the time. Wow. But my verbal was like 400. Okay. So I felt uh, the verbal was not great. Great, yeah. yeah. But I didn't realize there were some programs, especially in engineering, they will consider your your quantitative and your analytical score okay. and not put too much weight on, on the your verbal. verbal. Okay. Yeah. So it was later that I realized, oh, they have programs like that. I see. So I applied. I got admission three months after that. And then... Uh, uh, I got the admission, no so, funding. So that is very characteristic of uh, 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 most schools that you get in abroad. You be most schools you'll be admitted. As, admitted or accepted that, by yeah, the funding. Yes. Okay. So I got the admission and I was like, yes, I have admission. I don't have $15,000 to every, pay the fee. Every semester? For, no, for the year. Oh, for the year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. It was a state university, University of Akron. Okay. So, it wasn't too expensive. Too expensive. Okay, I yeah. see. So, I wasn't going to get uh, the fees 
boarding, mm. uh, like all these expenses. I didn't That's have anybody lot. who was going to do that for me. Yes. So, uh, I'm the person, I'm the type of person that really uh, uh, does a lot of research. Okay. So, through my research, I found out I had to ask somebody in the department mm. that, uh, who was my advisor. So, I had contacted the secretary at the department, asking the secretary about my advisor. Okay. And she was uh, uh, kind enough to send me the name of the professor. Wow. So, I sent a mail to the professor that uh, this... Dr. Uh, uh, I call him Dr. M. Okay. Uh, this is my situation. I got admission uh, into the master's program, but looking at my situation, if I don't get funding, there you is no be... way I can make that trip, or there's no way I'll be able to get to the program. Wow. So I was asking him about research opportunities that he had. Okay. And uh, if there were, uh, if I could work in his research team, oh, or wow. I could help with teaching or something like that. Okay. So I sent a mail and. I think two weeks after that, he responded. I was there. He responded, and he said, "I had sent you an offer." Wow. Or whatever. And, and three days later, I received the FedEx in Ghana. Wow. And that's how the journey started. Wow. Very interesting. So, this is this is very motivating. Yeah, so, this is what research. So that's how. So that's how I got here. Okay. So that's how I got here. So very I got here. I did a master's. And uh, I graduated 2010, but okay. that was the time around the recession. Okay. So there wasn't too uh, much going too on. Too much going on, okay. especially for international students. Okay. For you to find a job. Oh wow. And I had always wanted to do the PhD. Okay. So I was like, Let if it's not ahead. easy for me to find a job now, then it's the best, best time, time to, to stay in school. Okay, I see. Yeah. So I. I your education. Yeah. So before. so I just carried on. I had a chance to move to other investors mm. but my advisor was such a nice man okay and a new phd could be frustrating sometimes yes so i just was like okay let me just work with this man wow and the truth is i think that was what actually helped me go through the whole program i see because uh around my second year uh like most phd students will tell you yeah. around your second year <laughs> that's what you feel you like you are not careful you will quit you will quit that's what you, you feel like ask man, yourself I'm... why am i doing this wow yeah because you have your friends out there working making money enjoying and, life uh, oh yeah buying and, uh, big cars and you are <laughs> you are holed up in the lab doing, doing research, research. And okay you have to worry about publishing writing papers reviewing literature it's like it's a whole lot i see yeah it's like a whole lot around that time okay so, so uh, 2010 to 20 2010 to 2014 that was when you yeah so i graduated with my phd in, in 2014 uh, in 2014 okay yeah so currently you've been working actively working for close to close to seven years okay so uh when i graduated um in civil, mm. what really happens is uh, we have the consulting side, okay. and then that's the industry side. Yes, and then we have the academia. Okay. When you talk about PhD in uh, civil engineering mm. or PhD in general, most people will think you will get into academia. Okay. Yeah, but uh, uh, what is not known is that there are not a lot of faculty positions. See. that all phd students, students can actually uh, get employed to work at okay and around 2010 because of the recession yeah almost all international students yeah who didn't want to go back okay because they were not going to get jobs they had to and they didn't even think about phd they all had to take PhD. <laughs> i see interesting yes so because if you wanted to stay in this country at you, the time you had to be in school i see because once you are out of school you're out of status. 60 90 days you have to be out of the country or else you are out of status yes okay so wow. that was what happened so okay. around 2013 2014 there was a lot of phd civil engineering wow. students interesting and our statistics actually show that there are a lot more phds in uh in civil, civil working okay. in industry than in academia wow okay yeah All so right. i after i graduated i stayed on to work as a post uh 
as a postdoc okay. for my professor. Most times you could go to a, another university mm. and spend about a year or two okay. uh, looking at uh, the system in the US now. Before you can get most faculty positions, mm. you should have done a postdoc wow. okay. for like a year or two. Okay. So I have started, but right from there, I, I didn't feel like uh, going into teaching. Mm. I honestly wanted to get out there, so work. Would you get, eventually go into teaching or you are I, undecisive? Oh, eventually, I feel like I... I will be able to do some teaching part time. Okay, that's what I'm looking at uh, right now. Okay. Full time right now, I'm not sure because I've been in industry for almost seven years. Yeah, yeah. So I would rather want to do uh, work as an adjunct faculty. Okay, uh, for a colleague, so I can still be helping uh, the next generation of uh, engineers. Okay. But I would still be uh, doing what I do. Very interesting. Yeah. Now, so, um, how would you want, or how would you like to be addressed? Because it's not easy for somebody to go to school, acquire your degree, your master's, and now your PhD. How would you want to be addressed? Uh, I want to be addressed as God Vinata. Uh, actually, <laughs> uh, funny enough, in the in the US. Yes. They don't people, lay too much people emphasis. People wouldn't on. even call you doctor. doctor. So they call me doctor and I'm like, hey. hey. <laughs> I see. They will, they will only call you a doctor, let's say, in, their, uh, in a much more professional setting, setting okay. where maybe they want to acknowledge your, your degree. I so, see. So it's like in an, in an official setting, yes. then they might introduce you as, as a doctor. Uh, as a doctor, you have a PhD, so, okay. so and so. But the everyday... Uh, everyday work everyday interaction they mm. just call you by your first your first name and i think i like that okay <laughs> i would be surprised you call me dr doctor. Doctor. and i'll still doctor. be looking around like hey are you calling me <laughs> i see yeah so so i think there's a difference between uh, how we place emphasis on titles okay okay you know because i know uh, uh back in ghana if somebody has a phd and you they want call to be them, Doctor is a big deal. It's a big deal. <laughs> but here, most people will be like, who cares? Who cares? Okay. Actually, because I feel like it doesn't have much to do with the titles. That's why I was telling you, um, when you have a PhD in civil, yes. trying to find your first job in industry mm. is hard. I see. Because you are basically going to do the same job as somebody who has, uh, 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 masters. Uh, who has a master's doing, doing. Uh -huh. so most people or most companies will feel like uh what can you do for us see that someone with someone, a master's yes. cannot do and they also some people have the notion once you have a phd mm. you have some ego okay and they wouldn't be able you to be, control you or ego. to pay you and 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 another thing is uh as I found through work, mm. as you leave school, much of the learning you do yes. whilst you are whilst you are working. Okay. So they worry: Will you be able to uh, 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 relearn, like okay. kind of you to understand? Hey, what you are doing in school is quite different from, from what we are doing here. So you have to learn this. Okay. You know, and not feel like, hey, I have a PhD and no. I see. Yeah, it's about the work. So most people will be like, and the whole idea too is you have a PhD, so they will think they will have to pay you more. I see. Uh, so getting that first job, it's 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 tough. Okay. But once, once you get, you get the, the first job, your progression is is very fast. I see. Uh, because you can move from engineer two to engineer five in okay. two years. I see. Now, you've currently settled in the United States, right? Yeah. And you are a Ghanaian by birth, right? Yeah. Any plans of going back home? Uh, going back home to visit or to... Um, there's a lot that people are doing. There's a lot of, you know, Africans in the diaspora who are going home. Uh, some going to stay, others going to do visibility studies, others going to impact their knowledge, you know, 
Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Stuff like yeah. that. So, so do you have any plans of going home and when you do go home, what are you going to do? Uh yeah, I have plans of going home but I I would only go when I have uh, like uh, I'll say everything pretty laid out for me. Okay. Uh, because uh, the kind of system I think uh it's being run in Ghana. Yes. Uh do you believe if I go to Ghana now as a structural engineer yeah. and I have to go to Ghana Highway Authority <laughs> as a bridge engineer, they would want me to start as an entry level engineer. Wow. Yeah. Because so, of how our civil service is structured. Okay. So if let's say I feel like I can get into Ghana to, to help Ghana with consultancy work. Okay. Because I believe uh, what I've done and I believe what I can do I see. Uh, to help the system. Yes. So I would want to go to Ghana okay. uh, to work as a consultant. Okay. Maybe for the ministry or uh, for one of the agencies. Mm. Uh, but apart from that, me going through the system and kind of going to start yeah. from scratch, I don't think anybody don't think would good. want to do that. Okay. Yes, I don't think anybody would want to do that. And uh, I would also want to uh, go back uh, if, let's say, they have uh, instituted lectures yes. uh, for the university. Mm. If they have something like that, okay. I would want to help, help. Okay. you know, uh, uh, also give our information in that sense. Mm. Because uh, I know I know a lot has changed, yes. but uh, now they have a master's in structural engineering. Program. Okay. They didn't have it years back. Years back. Uh, I don't know what they are teaching in that curriculum. Okay. There might be something that I know that might enrich the program. Yes. Where I can take students through a seminar, mm. maybe a couple hours of seminar of, let's say, bridge engineering. Okay. You okay. Know? Yeah. So that is, uh, that's another way that I can help. And, uh, other volunteering opportunities uh, I, I see. Also so see since we are living in a global village now you wouldn't mind consulting for other countries as well like other african countries nigeria south africa you name it oh yeah if there is definitely something uh, uh, within my specialization and that's one thing about civil civil is it's it's pretty broad okay because uh and somebody will say what well, civil engineering Generally, people don't know. Don't Civil know. <laughs> engineering, I would say, it's everything around you, you see. I see. From the buildings you live in, okay. the roads that you drive on, the, the water that comes to your home, okay. when you create your trash, okay. how it gets disposed. Wow. So it's like your everyday life, life. depends on uh, a specialization Decision. of civil engineering. Wow. Okay. Uh, so it's so broad. Uh, even the bridges that you travel on, yes. even the cars you drive, drive. Okay. there is a it's in between civil and mechanical okay. so, so you chose to so, go into bridges so so I chose structural engineering, oh, structural engineering. and okay. in structural engineering structural engineering itself is so broad, I it see. cuts across mechanical, so the cars that you have, that you drive mm. the weight on the cars, the okay. frames wow the number of rotations that your tires have to travel okay. for. It's like a whole lot. The planes that we travel in mm. with the fuselage, it's all structures. No. So structural engineering is simply uh, you try, like anything which carry loads and you trying to assess and making sure you are able to uh, design okay. for your structure to withstand it. I see. So we have structural engineering in the offshore in the oil industry. Okay. There is structural engineering uh, in the mechanical automobile industry. Mm. Uh, you have structural engineering in the building industry, okay. where all these skyscrapers are built, are built to withstand yeah. wind loads and earthquakes and all that. And then we have a structural engineering in bridge engineering. I see. Then we have even pavement, pavement design. Okay. We have some structures in there. I see. So, in Ghana, I work in the building industry. Okay. Uh, in the building part of the structures. Mm. But over here, and after the PhD, I'm doing the bridge part. Okay. That. Now, I remember one time you were telling me that before a bridge is built, how do they calculate the weight of the bridge, especially your hanging bridges, right? How is the weight calculated? Because you see heavy trucks, you, you know, cars plying the bridges every single day. And those bridges last for 
you know a longer time how is yeah. the weight of the bridge calculated yeah so um the weight uh of a bridge uh, you basically tell me to take you to a typical bridge design just so, something brief <laughs> yeah 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 easily <laughs> yeah so uh everybody on the surface of the earth mm. had some kind of weight which is exerted on you as okay. a result of gravity okay and that is the weight that you have okay so you have your weight yes everything which you can touch mm. tangible has some amount of weight, weight. okay uh, so in structural engineering we call that uh, your dead load okay so the structure that you see mm. the uh, uh, the deck uh, which is the surface that you ride on yes the beams which will support the decks mm. uh, the substructure mm. uh, the columns they all have weight okay which is the dead weight mm. from gravity so those ones you can calculate just like that's physics okay you can actually calculate the dead weight mm. then after that you ask yourself what other loads does these bridges have to resist okay so that's when you ask yourself oh we have these big tracks going over it mm. so because the track does not stay on the bridge forever yes it, it gets on it it moves. moves any load that moves yeah that's transient we call it a life load okay so you first have your dead load mm. and then you have your transient load which is the life load okay apart from that uh in high winds mm. you might not consider it okay. but in high winds they exert some kind of load and pressures on some of these structures I see. so you have to consider your wind loads okay then you have to consider when a track is traveling on a bridge mm. and then there is a wind the wind blows a track okay so we call it a wind load a wind load on a life load Wow. So there's a wind load on the structure, okay. and there's a wind load on the life load. That's so, that's, ba that's so basically, <laughs> basically, what you are trying to do in structural engineering is trying to figure out all the type of loads, okay. or all the worst possibilities that can happen. Oh, I see. And you designing for your building to withstand to it. withstand all that's this. all you are doing. Wow. So you have to think. <laughs> yeah. So we have that. Okay. If you leave. Uh, uh, in a place where you have a lot of uh, uh, snow, a lot of ice yes. getting on there, you have to consider it. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah, so we have, <laughs> then apart from that, differences in temperatures wow. when the weather is cold, hot, cold, all of a sudden it gets hot, okay. expansion, contract, uh, 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 expansion, contraction. Okay. You have to consider that. Those are thermal movements. Wow. Uh, so you have some thermal gradients those so there are a whole lot in there i see so you have to analyze the bridge members mm. for all this so it is based on the load that you will decide whether concrete can do the job okay or steel steel okay if when you are in a cave mm. example when you are in a very sharp cave, cave okay there is possible if you have a beam it is likely it might want to twist yes so we call something torsion okay and uh concrete mm. uh, has it has to be in a certain shape okay to have the better torsional property wow so sometimes steel might do the job better and sometimes sometimes concrete, concrete so depending okay. on what you're looking at so you have to consider cost uh so economy is one okay uh, because your your whole idea is being able to make sure people can go over the bridge safely i see at the cheapest cost one thing I've Safety realized, cost. one thing I've realized is road construction in Ghana. We don't do a lot of concrete roads. Is it the cost? But we don't have the money. We don't have yeah, the money to it's, do it's, it. It's, it's yeah. Wow. We don't. We don't have the yeah. But the concrete, expensive. the concrete roads will last for a longer time. I'm yeah. Talking about so fifty years plus. So it's like you trying to, let's say you build one concrete road in Accra. Yes and let's say you could have built 10 asphalt roads okay that. so they'll go it, for the 10 so asphalt it, it has political reasons okay. it has, it's like economic reasons political reasons a whole lot i see because if let's say kumadi uh, uh, people in kumasi also need a road are you, you going to spend the all the, the money to build a road in accra i see no okay so you might want to go Consider. asphalt and then build a road in accra one in kumase one in takrade i see you know so it has to do with uh, this whole value for money okay but in the long run the maintenance cost 
of the concrete road is cheaper than yes i see uh -huh. so but you know everything has to do with the money that Aspect, you have. the so, initial money or yes. whatever okay so if you don't have a lot of money then mm. that's the that's where it comes in okay so basically that's that's how they so after all these loads have been calculated mm. then your near your load should go somewhere okay so you ask yourself where will your load go mm. so the loads would not vanish into thin air. Everything will have to go into the foundation. Wow. <laughs> yes. Okay. So that's where the the geotech actually comes in. Before okay. we even start, somebody will go in there and and actually request for an investigation. Wow. So they're going to drill all uh, the way boring down. logs all yes. the way down and get to rock. Okay. And they present you something which will give you an idea of how where because once you get to rock, yes. you know your load can your actually yes. yes. Once you get into rock, you are good. Okay. Uh, so they will give you the idea, mm. and so that you know where your foundation should should actually take you to. I see. And we use something typically we call either pass or drill shafts. Okay. Different. And so they are vertical. They are like vertical columns. Oh, okay. That we have to drill all drill the way all down the way. into okay. rock, and then we have to. But then there are cases where you don't have rock anywhere. Wow. Let's say rock is 200 feet. So what do you do? Are that? you? Uh -huh. So that's where you're going to apply. Uh, it still fixes. Okay. The, we call it skin friction. Mm. You know, if you try to pull something through, uh, through uh, like a dense soil. Okay. You see, you keep pushing to the point where you cannot push. Push anymore. anymore. Okay. Yes. And it is because of the friction, friction I see. of the soil around it. So through the studies, we'll be able to find that. So there are instances where we don't get all the way to rock. Okay. But then you have to terminate somewhere. I see. Yeah. Interesting. You have to, you have to terminate somewhere. But uh, the overall summary of that is your load needs to go somewhere. Okay. So yeah. this is just a little knowledge for you guys and yeah and uh, one thing about uh, people ask oh so how do you decide the weight of the tracks okay so we don't go about uh, uh calculating the weight of every track Truck. no through research and studies our building codes uh, 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 our codes okay. came up with a standardized track okay I see. So we believe once we use that standardized track to go over, over the it several every time it should cover every every type of uh, very interesting uh, yeah but then so if there are let's say uh, uh different type of vehicles that mm. come in with much more capacity yes get into the system yeah and their load rating actually exceeds what Your... we had calculated okay as a standardized track mm. then uh they will before they go over that bridge yes. you have to consult the owner of the bridge i see okay uh, so in the so, u.s they do that i don't know about i don't other know about places. other places okay so once you are going to a seat you have to uh, consult the you have to consult the owner and they will have to run through make sure that that, that will be okay or okay. else they wouldn't allow you to use the bridge i see very interesting yeah. and uh, uh as bridges age mm. but most of the bridges especially in the u.s were built 60s, yes. 50s, 60s, 70s. Yeah. As the bridge uh, ages, uh, the the materials deteriorate. Okay. So the original loads that they were designed for, yeah, along the line, uh, kind of they diminish. Yeah. So okay. sometimes they will have to actually post the load. Wow. Tell you, hey, if you are, let's say, if your weight is more than more than, let's say, you can't use it. Twenty, forty kips. Okay. You can't use this. I see. Yeah. It's because of maybe uh, there's an inspection every two years in yeah. the US. Okay. They inspect every, every bridges, two years. Every two years. Wow. They inspect all bridges every wow. two years. Okay. Yeah. Now, what advice do you have for the youth, especially in the Ghanaian communities? Because the reason why I'm saying this is a lot of people want to go to school and, you know, supposedly they don't want to go for the tough subjects you know they just want an easy way out now what advice do you have for the youth uh, 
uh, like I would say, uh, we are all going to school uh, with the aim that one day we're going to graduate yeah. and uh, get a job and then make some money. Yes, most so, definitely. So, yeah. So, I will look at, I will tell the youth, look at the trend. Mm. Uh, how things are going. Okay. What are the careers of the future? Areas that you think will be, in my case, uh, I know if you do something in STEM, that's science, technology, engineering, mathematics, mathematics okay. and you even graduate and you can't even find anything to do in Ghana. There are countless opportunities for you everywhere. In everywhere the world. you go. Uh, so know uh, 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 which area you get into yes. and uh, be prepared to do the work. I see. Uh, because a lot of people will shy away from the STEM because yes. of how? Uh, how they will say difficult it is. But I believe once uh, others have done it, you can you can do it. Uh, once others and uh, we shouldn't be going. We going to school. Our particular focus should not be about uh, about the grades. Okay. It should be about uh, uh, getting an education. I see. Trying to, because I was telling somebody. Yeah. Uh, after my bachelor's. Okay. I came here uh, a master's first. Yes. And uh, we had done a lot of math courses uh, at KNUS. Okay. But uh, if they had, uh, let's say, written an equation of a sphere. Okay. You know it's an equation of a sphere. Yeah. They, they ask you uh, uh, the divergence uh, to the sphere equation. Mm. Back in Ghana, you know the theory or the formula to you use. You know the formula yeah. to use. But then here they will ask you, what does that represent? <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> yes. And it was it was surprising. Like we were doing a lot of stuff and they were all just things around us. I see. But we never thought about it. That there was one of those questions. It was just a perpendicular uh, uh to just a surface, to just a point on the surface. And we were just doing, I, I think the dive or the, yeah, it's been a while, so yeah. I don't really remember, but there were a lot of things that we were doing that you could actually understand. I see. You know? But so practically, they it, yeah, focus. They should, yeah. Okay. I think that's, uh, I think that's one of the problems that we have. So even, even a civil, uh, I don't know what they are doing now, but the kind of questions that uh, they will they will give you in Ghana, yeah. and the kind of questions that they will give you here is totally different. Ghana, they will give you the much more theoretical, theoretical. question. Let's say they will draw a simple beam mm. in Ghana. They put a hinge here. Okay. They put a roller here, and then they put the load on it. I see. Over here, what they do is they will draw a bridge. Okay. They give you one end. <laughs> They so, give you the other end, and then they they'll they put a track on it. So that's more practical. And they'll tell you to find a reaction. Wow. So it's the same question, mm. but one is actually bringing the whole practical thing into out life. of it yeah. into life. So you have to understand it and extract that Ghana question out of what they've given you. Wow. So it's a step further. Okay, I see. You know. Yeah. Uh -huh. So. And I remember there were a lot of things around us where the lecturers could have just taken us out to just go and, go and see, see physically. And then it would have helped. But I we see. didn't do all that. So Strictly classroom based. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, because there were some things that we felt like, I felt like, oh, some of these things are, they are kind of abstract. I see. But I got here and I was like, no, these things are easy. Wow. Very practical, very easy. They related to basically to whatever yeah. you are doing, and then so you wouldn't give me a problem, and and I wouldn't know where to start from. Okay, you know. Yeah. Now that is also not to say that uh, everybody should go into STEM, right? I mean, we are all different. You know, we come from different walks of life. So, and one thing I believe that our counselors. Uh, you know, in the in uh, schools yeah. in the U.S., we have advisors yeah. who are supposed to serve as counselors to guide us to tailor our educational needs. But I can 
you know, boldly tell you that most of the counselors or advisors will not have time for you. So I'm doing this so that we can as well relate, we can talk to our brothers and sisters in the diaspora. You know, some of these things can help us in a long way, you know. So that is my main reason of doing this video. It is not to say that Africans uh, are smarter than a particular group of people and vice versa. So that's just a simple disclaimer. Um, anything else you want to tell my viewers before we close? Uh, yeah, I will just tell the youth that uh, uh, they should always be making better use of the internet. Okay. Uh, researching because there is a lot going on. Yes. Uh, a lot of opportunities can open up to you, just you being on the internet and trying to make very good use of it. I see. Yeah, so uh, it shouldn't just be about the uh, the social, social media, media aspect just uh going after news laughing okay yeah there's, there's, a there's lot. money to be made on there okay uh if you are stuck or maybe you finished the university and you are so many years you don't have a job you're stuck in ghana there are opportunities elsewhere for you so okay. yeah they should make very good use of their time better use of the internet and uh yeah, I think that's it. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions for Dr. Arthur, leave me a comment and I will duly respond. Now, if you leave me nasty comments, I'll personally delete them. I'll see you in my next video. It is adieu for now. Thank you.